Welcome to Sedona. I'm Captain Jess Molina, and I'll be your instructor. For this lesson, we're going to start on the ground and focus on some basic concepts. Fundamentals every pilot needs to know before hitting the skies. This is your plane. A classic. The Cessna 152. Take a look around it. In the simulator, anytime you want, you can easily switch to cursor mode. The cursor is handy for interacting with menus and cockpit controls or instruments. As you can see, activating the cursor also displays the toolbar. The toolbar is a quick access menu that allows you to control various aspects of the simulation. Try to find and open the basic controls panel. The basic controls panel is a useful reminder of the button layout for the devices you're currently using. Now try to find and open the camera panel in the toolbar. The camera panel allows you to access the various views and camera modes of the simulation. Go ahead and close all the panels for now. Right now, we are in the external view mode. Let's switch to cockpit view next. In front of you is the yoke, the primary means of controlling the aircraft. In the simulation, you'll be controlling the aircraft with your peripherals of choice. So let's hide the yoke for now. Some instruments allow multiple interactions. For example, rotating a dial clockwise or counterclockwise. In these cases, you need to lock the cursor onto them in order to interact. For example, take a look at the clock in the middle of the dashboard. Go ahead and lock the cursor on it. Now change the clock time. You can unlock the cursor once you're ready. For now, we're done with the cursor, so go ahead and hide it. All right, as we've seen, when you want to look around you, it's easy to rotate the camera. But you can also move it freely in the cockpit to get a better view of anything you want to see. Even through a window to look outside. Pro tip, once you find a camera position you like, you can save a shortcut to easily get back to that view anytime. Now, reset the camera to its original position. Then try switching to your custom one again. All right, that covers all the main camera functions available in the simulation. Try to familiarize yourself with them a bit more. Then reset the camera to its original position whenever you're done. Great. Let's get you familiar with the aircraft, a Cessna 152, and a few commands to navigate it through the skies. In front of you is the yoke. The yoke is like a steering wheel, more or less. Turn it left or right to control the ailerons and bank the aircraft into turns. Look at the trailing edge of the wings while turning the yoke to see the effect on the ailerons. Okay. Now, the difference between the yoke and a steering wheel is you can pull or push on the yoke. This controls the elevator at the back of the aircraft to make it climb or descend. 
Look at the horizontal stabilizer while you pull on the yoke. You can see how it affects the elevator. Nice. Down at your feet are the rudder pedals. They steer the aircraft when you're on the ground. The upper part of the pedals also control your brakes. In the air, they control the rudder at the end of the vertical stabilizer to yaw the aircraft. This is mostly for small corrections. For coordinating turns or compensating for a plane's tendency to pull left during takeoffs and climbs. Look at the vertical tail while operating the pedals to see the effect on the rudder. Great. Last but not least, the throttle is located near the center of the cockpit. Pushing forward will increase power. Pulling back will decrease power. First, look at the throttle and select it. Keep it selected and push it forward to increase power. Power is increased. Now pull it back to decrease power. Power is decreased. Now we'll do the same without focusing on it. Deselect the throttle. Look away from the throttle and increase power. Set your throttle to idle. Excellent. When the engine is on, you'll be able to see the power change on your RPM indicator. You'll find it on the right side of the dashboard. This tells you how fast the engine is spinning in hundreds of revolutions per minute. Next, take a look at your current speed on the airspeed indicator. It's on the left in the main instrument panel. It measures the speed in knots. To check your altitude, look to the altimeter. It's on the right side of the main instrument panel. The altimeter has three hands, similar to a clock. The long thick pointer indicates 100 foot intervals. The short thick one is 1000 foot intervals and the long thin one, 10,000 foot intervals. That's all for today. Next time, we'll see how it feels in the air.